sustainability is more complex than one unit. And just carbon emissions is like the lazy, easy way out of just not doing harm. Oh, fantastic question. Let's say a strategic sustainability perspective, living mindfully, one could translate to supply chain transparency. It doesn't help if just Vast improves its footprint, but that Vast is looking to bring along the sector as well, I think is absolutely bomb. Hi Liz, it's so great that you're here today. Um, you're such an inspiring person and one of my biggest role models when it comes to female leaders and sustainability. And you're the founder of your own social business, growing and harvesting cacao in Ecuador, the Philippines and Papua New Guinea, where you were born yourself, producing high grade chocolate while at the same time increasing farmer livelihoods and education. And you're also the founder of the Cacao Ed Academy um, through which I got to know you. And you advise private companies and the European Commission on sustainable finance and eco innovation. You are a board member of the CGIAR, a research partnership for food security for the future, striving to reduce poverty and improve natural resources. And you are a board member of the Bundesverband Nachhaltige Wirtschaft. Could you tell me a little bit about the work you do for um, the BNV, the Bundesverband Nachhaltige Wirtschaft, and maybe the CGIAR? That would be Indeed. really interesting. Indeed. Well, these are places where I find my peers, and I'm very lucky to have been elected to the board of both of these organizations. So uh, BNV is the German Federation of Sustainable Economy, and it is, uh, I think, 27 years old now. It was initially created by pioneers, entrepreneurs that were already deciding to make their companies green, breweries and accountants and uh, Uh, tax advisors and, and um, household cleaning product manufacturers, all of these pioneers around Germany who already decided decades ago, we're going to be part of the change. We know that sustainable futures have to be done. And so it's a very vibrant organization made up of these companies who are pushing for political change. And that's what we do at BNV. We work with the regulators in Berlin and Brussels about pushing for more ambitious legislation that creates a more even playing field for those that want to be sustainable. That means very clear things like supply chain transparency law, true cost accounting, a, a reasonable price for carbon and carbon emissions, means clarity around the use of chemicals, waste management, application of plastics. And so it's a political organization that represents the interests of ambitious commercial enterprises to want to be both commercial and sustainable. You know, I just feel like a guardian for a piece of time. And these are these things. CGIAR is 50 years old. Sometimes mm -hmm. I think we need to see our place in the world as just being a guardian for a period of time to receive a legacy and contribute to it and move it on. And it's never about this time now or us now. You're the brain behind our vast green sustainability strategy. And we are really happy to have you as the expert on board. And we wanted to know um, if you could explain how you connected to Vast Forward and how did you develop our sustainability strategy? Oh, it's wonderful. It is such a pleasure to work with the Vast team. And very clearly, it's working with the Vast team all together. This is not just the initiative of Marin and Matthias, who are leading the organization, but it is a collaborative approach. I met Marin uh, perhaps uh, five or six years ago through a uh, organization in Hamburg called Ladies Mentoring. And Ladies Mentoring is a wonderful organization started by a common friend of ours, Tatiana Kiel, who brought together you know, women who are on the front foot who are either running their own businesses or taking leadership positions and wanting to learn from each other, share with each other how they do that. And wonderfully, I met Marin uh, through there. And we have met in Hamburg and in Barcelona and at different places around, the, around Europe where sometimes we meet up and have weekends and drink a lot of wine, uh, talk a lot about our businesses <laughs> and... Um, Yeah, share experiences. And we know each other from there. And I think we just have a mutual respect for each other's expertise. 
And uh, from there, uh, was in a conversation last year with Marin and her uh, life and business partner, Matthias, about the change that they wanted to contribute. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. And um, why, in your opinion, um, did you develop a sustainability strategy for such a small business like Vast Forward? Um, I mean, wouldn't it be better to start implementing a sustainability strategy for a big player um, in the first place? As you mentioned, on one side, uh, our business does a lot of work with European Commission and public and private financiers as it relates to sustainable finance and ambitious legislation moving forward. I can make that strategy and do that advising and be entrepreneur in residence for all sorts of investment funds because I am informed directly by what's happening on the ground. And that means working concurrently with, we, we also write strategy for multinational retail organizations and television and broadcast institutions, um, as well as small design agencies. Uh, it's the breadth from multinational to SME, where working really with the hands, talking with employees, what, what's important to you? How does it work? That whole piece of work informs the capacity that I can do the strategic stuff on the other side with public institutions or with massive social change. Um, this is what we love. And we're constantly balancing the size of company we're working with, the nature of where they're coming from. We also work with cosmetics manufacturers. We also work with uh, uh, event and, and the music industry. And surprisingly, there is more in common through all of these sectors and the needs for it to be incentivized and pushed to be part of sustainable futures then is different. It's, it's part of the change. I understand there are some 66 million SMEs in Europe. SMEs are famous for being innovators and agile. I think they put a lot of fire under the multinationals and mid caps, especially with being earlier to market, especially with being responsive to true service needs. So, um, Everybody wants to be part of it. Could you maybe tell me a little bit more about um, Vast Forward Sustainability Strategy, how you designed it and why you included um, the things that you included? Um, maybe you could elaborate a little bit on that. The Vast Forward Strategy is completely informed by the Vast Forward team. The team is made up of smart um, women who are mothers themselves and working in business and the alignment between their values and how they want to show up in the workplace and do their job seems to be very closely aligned. That's what I observe from the vast team. It's often a relationship between, well, who you are and how you work is very tight. I love that in an organization. So it became very clear that the first place we start to ask or to look for an orientation about what strategy to build is with the team. Your colleague, Vanessa, <laughs> was very well informed about the UN SDGs and also about results of climate change and the IPCC. And she did a lot of uh, surveying of your team colleagues to find out what's important to you. What, what do we want to, how do we want to turn up in our business and be this positive change? And from that, she found things like your colleagues want to conserve resources. Your colleagues want to um, live and, and work mindfully. And when we look at this on let's say a strategic sustainability perspective, living mindfully, one could translate to supply chain transparency. It means working with organizations that we believe in. Resource, um, what, was it, what did they call it? Resource uh, reduction relates very much to a waste management strategy. And I think this is what's key in any sustainability strategy for anybody is starting first with the team and you know, some customers and some suppliers about what's important to you and how does it work? I remember in the very beginning when we had the results came in, they came in like live consciously. And at first I remember a conversation with the team. They're like, well, yes, that's our output, but that's not very, you know, that's not very concrete or serious business. And I was like, wait, no, it is because it's how you feel. It's what you expressed. And look, here in science and regulation, this is where it's just mirrored back. It's called supply chain transparency or it's called waste management and it's called, you know, um, electrical waste intention. So it is all there. And I think the, the most interesting part is when we can connect those true values of what we feel and want with the evidence and the regulation that says, indeed, these are the ways to go. So this is how we built the sustainability strategy with Vast Forward very much mirroring the, um, the values of the team. I think 
that collaboration in general and sustainability is a very important subject. Could you maybe elaborate on that and tell me why you think collaboration is so important in terms of sustainability? We all live in a bubble and what we have to do is constantly burst it. And I think that's what collaboration does. It means listening from another viewpoint. Many times through the development of the vast strategy, I was giving examples of sectors that were very different to the design and technology world of Vast Forward. And I think this is what enabled the team to understand the principles a bit better was having these metaphors and these examples. So collaboration is bursting the bubble and looking at, at examples from very, very different locations. I think collaboration also improves things. If I had just come up with a sustainability strategy from VAST by looking at, uh, at the financial statements um, or just at looking at the website, the advertising of what Marion and Matthias say they do, or by looking at um, doing an evidence assessment of what um, similar companies live and do, that wouldn't have the fingerprint of what makes Vast already so special with its customers, which is this responsive and personal touch. So I think it's an improvement. It makes improvements. And finally, I think it's inclusive. Nobody told what they're doing without adding to it. And I think especially with topics like sustainability that they, everyone's got their own interpretation of what, they, what it is. Everyone's got their own relationship to it. And I think when we actually collaborate to co-define and understand this, then we all have a fingerprint in there and, and we sign up to it because it's not something we're just being told to do. It's something that's a reflection of our interpretation. And that means it can change. Nothing's ever static. This is just the strategy for now. It will evolve every year and every decade as the science gets better and our experiences get more informed. What advice would you give to small or medium enterprises that want to implement a sustainability strategy? Oh, fantastic question. I have three answers. Follow the money, match your values and get help. What I mean by that is follow the money is <clears throat> sometimes in sustainability, I hear companies say, oh, we would like to be green and they look around and they pick something easy. And what I encourage you to do is to follow the money in terms of look at the financial footprint of the company because it's often an indicator of the carbon footprint and look at the big ticket items and start there. That is the first thing you can easily do. Pick the biggest, sometimes the biggest ticket items are property, leasing, sometimes it's um, employees and how people are working together. Sometimes it's technology or the manufacturing process. Start with the biggest financial impact and the, or the biggest financial cost and orientation around the company and start looking back this way. Follow the money because one or two small changes in some of these big expensive items can actually make a very significant carbon or social footprint. And that I give this advice because it's non-scientific. You don't have to be an environmental scientist to figure it out. Every company owner and every, everybody is looking at their financial accounts. We do that. We have to do that every month for tax reporting. So that's why rather than, let's say, saying, oh, conduct a supply chain transparency map of your organization, I think that's too hard. And your question was, what is the simplest first thing that an SME can do? And that's why I say, go to your financial accounts, find the big ticket items and start there with a simple question of, Advice number two, which is matching your values. Who are we working with to get this done? Does that match our, our values? You know, that, these are questions then about nearshoring and farshoring. This is about where is the material coming from? Is it suitable for us, all the, all the technologies? What's behind it? How does it work? So matching your values is like we did with the team from Vast in terms of what's your interpretation of sustainability? How does it express to you? And you can apply this directly to the big ticket items. And the third question or the third answer is get help. And that I really mean asking for advice, just like we ask for advice with a tax advisor. I, I, I hate to give the tax example for sustainability, but it's still the best one that we all know. Nobody sits down and tries to do some sort of future forecasting profit and loss idea for a new product without getting some ideas. And I think sometimes we underestimate that about how much we think we can do, especially when we don't know it. You know, it's not inbuilt. Like I would say another relationship is safety. Safety equipment and safety processes are much more 
uh, in our field of knowledge. You know, we, we grow up with seat belts in cars. We know there's safety equipment for machinery. We know there's always big red off buttons. We're sensitized to safety and we have some level of education through our whole population. We don't with sustainability yet. And so in the absence of a general knowledge and understanding of all the peers like tax, we have to go get a bit of help. And that might mean joining a local network, a business network, your industry association, uh, hiring a consultant, uh, or even working with, this is what I'm noticing, working with um, suppliers or customers who are green. It's amazing how that push-pull effect works. There are some customers that I have um, who've been able to acquire new customers, so they've become green themselves, and they've been able to create a green service or product and actually make new business because they've found that there are customers who want to buy something ethical and sustainable they can believe in, and through that relationship, they learn. Otherwise, they just put even in their procurement requests that they want to see sustainable offers from their suppliers. Again, another way where you don't have to be the genius of everything, just start putting it out there. Hey, we would like to procure X. Please give us your standard offer and then please give us your sustainable offer. And then inform yourself just by, well, what's the difference? Is it a quality difference? Is it a price difference? Is it availability difference? And what would it take to take the sustainable one? So that's the third one when I mean get help, get advice, but also get it from your customers and your suppliers. Uh, why do you think it is important for companies not only to focus on CO2 neutrality, but to focus also on, you know, SDGs and um, the UN, um, the Paris Climate Agreement, when it comes to, to creating a sustainability strategy? That's an excellent question. Sustainability in itself isn't called carbon. And carbon is only one of the 14 greenhouse gases that we have to work with. So exactly by the nature of your question, sustainability is more complex than one unit. And just carbon emissions is like the lazy, easy way out of just not doing harm. The new law, the EU taxonomy that is coming in says, do no harm. It doesn't say, account your carbon. <laughs> it says, do no harm. And everywhere, by nature of living and having business, there will be collateral damage everywhere we, we move and grow things. So being conscious of that and understanding it is key. What I love about Marin and Matthias was the willingness to truly live environmental and social governance. Everything from their investment strategy to financial management through to data hygiene. You're a tech company. Just how do you manage data and saving and, and sufficiency of code? I thought these were, there were already many green and sustainable activities existing in VAST before we entered on this path already. They were already doing smart data hygiene. They were already doing paperless office. They were already doing no travel strategies. What this has just done is, let's say, implement the emerging laws and best practices from other sectors in, which is supply chain transparency, which is giving of resources and delivering into social good and being part of social change which is champion good practices and bringing the whole sector forward. Doesn't help if just VAST improves its footprint, but that VAST is looking to bring along the sector as well, I think is absolutely bomb. Knowing where they're investing their money, making sure their money is not going into fossil fuels, as well as choosing better suppliers everywhere along the chain. Brilliant. Yeah, so we hope that with this transparency, we can also get others on board and maybe also make it a bit easier towards the transition of sustainability. So Indeed. this, thank you so much for being here today and um, talking with me about Vast Green and Vast Forward's um, um, mission to go, to go greener and go sustainable. And yeah, thank you for your time. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for being part of the change. <laughs>